All right, so step one to make the most amazing braised beef short ribs and the most amazing pot with the most amazing veg and the most amazing ingredients is some amazing, sorry. One of my favorite things about the changing of the seasons, honestly, is how it affects the way that I cook. And as soon as that first rainy day comes in or the first sprinkling of snow, I just crave one pot delicious cooked meals. So braised beef short ribs ticks off all the boxes. It feeds a lot of people. The whole house smells like your own personal French bistro. So braised beef short ribs with celery act and cauliflower puree is a twist on an old classic. And it has one of my favorite ingredients in the whole entire world. Love. Beef ribs start with ribs from beef from the butcher, and these are delicious. There's a ton of fat in there, which means a lot of flavor, and there's some bone in there, which means that gives it a ton of flavor, but it's a tougher cut. So it works really well when you cook it for a long time at a low temperature. And the seasonings for the beef, I keep dead simple. So lots of salt and pepper. And this is really important to get that good beefy flavor. The beef short rib from the rib where the cut is has a tremendous amount of that good quality beef flavor. And on the bone, it makes it delicious. So you wanna give it a generous seasoning of salt and pepper. Okay, and here's my little secret spice. You, this is totally optional, but this gives it a ton of wow factor and gives it that, what is that quality? Just a light little kiss of allspice. It has notes of clove and cinnamon and nutmeg. And if you just put a little bit of allspice on it, it mixes with the tomato and the beef stock and it gives it some really big wow factor. Okay, so the veg for this is pretty simple, but it's onions, carrots, and celery. This is the quintessential aromatic veg for any soup stew, stock, or long cook like beef short ribs. If you're French, it's known as mirepoix. If you're doing Louisiana Creole cooking, it's known as the Holy Trinity. If you're from South America, it's known as sofrito. Jazz is your thing, it's the trio. You're a movie buff, Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, and Ron Weasley. The three amigos, Charlie's Angels, Han, Luke, and Leia. All I'm saying is that it's an iconic trio and you can't leave it out of a braised beef rib because it gives you whopping flavor. And honestly, the hardest part about the recipe is cutting it all up. So here's the deal. You can cut this up really nice and big and then discard it later and just have that really nice decadent sauce pooled over the beef ribs and the celery yak and cauliflower puree. But I like to cut it up in little bite-sized pieces because when it cooks down and soaks up all that flavor, I love ladling that cooked veg over the beef. It's free flavor and it's just delicious. All right, that's pretty good. Lots of stuff to go in it, but let's start cooking. Step one for the beef ribs is you wanna get a really beautiful sear on it. A nice hot pan, a good shot of oil, and you wanna hear a gigantic sizzle. That's delicious. You wanna get all sides of the beef really nice and brown. That's gonna give you a good crust, start the flavor engagement, and the natural fat in the beef will kind of render into the pan. And then when you start cooking vegetables and the beef fat, it's delicious. So step one, a nice crust on all sides of the beef. So I know you think a one pot meal is like, oh, it's simple, you just throw everything in and then wait for a couple hours and then you're good. But there's so many chances to build some unbelievable flavor. And number one is this crust. Check it out, that's what you wanna see. You wanna see the salt and the pepper kind of blackened and toasted. The allspice smells delicious, so keep that going. You want a crust on either side. It smells so good. As soon as the beef fat renders, makes you smile. Okay, so step one is down. That's kind of like the gentleman stretch your engines. Now it's time to put the car in a gear. There's a lot of beef fat in there. A lot of people pour that fat out and start with fresh oil. That's where we want to pump the brakes a little bit. I love the flavor of the beef fat and all those sticky brown bits from the beef and the salt and the pepper, you want to keep that. That's called bond. It's a really fancy name for free flavor. 
flavor. So step two, let's get her into gear. Put in the carrot, celery, and onions, and you wanna cook them down slowly. You wanna swipe them around in some of that beef fat. They're gonna soak it up, and that veg is gonna be so tasty, and it's a great starting point to keep on building flavor, baby. It smells so good. Man, there's something so satisfying about the smell of cooking onions, carrots, and celery. It smells so delicious. Reminds me of culinary school. So I'm probably about to get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. So along with the mirepoix, I throw in some garlic cloves. They're really good. There's a lot of sweetness in there, and they start out as like big garlic flavor, but over time they cook down and they get soft and caramelized, and they turn really nice and sweet, and it gives the sauce such a beautiful texture, especially when you bash it up a little bit. It's unbelievable. So get the garlic in there, keep it whole, keep it moving. It smells so good. It totally reminds me of like, like your grandma's house or culinary school. I, like, I, I don't even know if we're recording still, but just honestly, that smell is like, it just hits you, man. Yeah. You know that tasty stuff is happening. All right, so once the veg is cooked a little bit, you don't have to soften it completely because this is gonna cook for like an hour, two hours, two hours plus. So you just want a little cook, let it soak up some of that beef fat. And the next thing to go in is tomato paste. Now tomato paste is gonna give it some body. It's gonna give it some great color, but tomato paste is really acidic. How do you like punch through that acidity? You wanna cook it, toast it out, get it in there with the veg and the beef fat, turn the heat up and really cook it. Keep moving it, keep it toasting. And it goes from like a really bitter acidic tomato flavor to a kind of sweeter, more grown up tomato flavor. It's so good. So if you're gonna use tomato paste anytime, get it in there, toast it off, and it just kind of relaxes its shoulders. Okay, this is fun. So once the tomato paste is cooked off, I like to make a roux for the sauce because it gives it a nice thick texture. Roux is in equal parts of butter and flour, not the little kangaroo baby from Winnie the Pooh, like, oh, piglet. Isn't roux the little, the... yeah, not that, but flour and butter. So you want to put the butter in, let it melt, and I like when the butter toasts a little bit. So keep it on high and let the butter boil and bubble and get a little nutty and brown and then add the flour and then Start adding liquid, start adding tons of flavor, and the beef can go in. The smell in here is delicious. It's a good day. And it's got such a nice little sweetness. As soon as you start cooking out the tomato paste and add butter, you get like these little hints of like almost savory caramel. It's so good. And then once the butter's in and melted and a little toasted, then you can throw in a flour. But here is a really quick tip. I like to cook the flour out and the roux out because you don't want that raw flour taste. And the longer you can cook the roux out, it gets really nutty. Let the flour brown, let it hang in there before you add liquid, and it really transforms. It goes from just using a thickening agent to get a good consistency to, like I said, adding a lot of flavor quickly. So put the flour in there, keep on moving it around, and let it get really nice, toasted, and nutty. Okay, once you can see the butter and the flour kind of cling to the tomato paste and get kind of nutty and brown and caramelly and delicious, then you can add liquid. The first liquid in my braise is wine. I'm gonna use white wine. It's like a lighter Osabuco kind of style sauce, but you could use red wine if you want. And that's the first liquid I put in because you want to hear a big splash and you want some evaporation. Just like that. Not much, about a half a cup, maybe a little bit more. Put that in there and kind of let that clean out the pan and swipe in all of that beautiful flavor. Okay, so once you're still with me, this is, this is gonna be delicious, trust me. Uh, once the wine and the butter and the flour have cooked out a little bit, then you can add stock. And you can use whatever you want, chicken stock, vegetable stock, you can use water. I'm using beef, so beef stock. But here's another good tip. Just a little bit at a time. Put a little bit of stock in, let it kind of cook with the flour and the butter. When it thickens and cooks for a minute, just add more stock until you have enough to submerge those beautiful fatty beef ribs in.
Okay, so three liquids make up the base of all of this. So a little bit of wine, some nice stock, and some tomatoes. So I use a touch of the juice, and then the big plump pieces of tomato, just crush in your hand, but do it over the pot, because if you crush them up here, you'll explode seeds all over yourself. Trust me, I've done that more than once more than once. So just go into the pot with it, crush up a few tomatoes, and again, like the tomato paste, once they cook for two hours and mix with the beef fat and all the vegetables, they get really nice and fudgy. It's delicious. So the beef has a lot of salt and pepper and flavor, and just putting in all those ingredients, all that veg, I give it a few twists of salt, a couple cracks of pepper, and then the last few ingredients are all about big, huge flavor. So rosemary and thyme are the perfect herb. I don't put a crazy amount of rosemary in it because rosemary can turn things really bitter, especially if it's on the stalk. So just a few sprigs of rosemary and then thyme is delicious. Thyme and beef and tomatoes and all of that veg, leave it on stems and all. It smells delicious. The bay leaf is really nice and woody. It smells, it smells like a forest. So get that in there and those herbs go really good with the flavor of beef. And those flavors go really good with the flavor of beef. And there's no potatoes or anything, but what I like to do is throw in a few navy beans, but throw them in dry. And they act honestly like little sponges. And when they cook and all of that beautiful flavorful liquid, they soak it up and it's just like, that's the best bean you've ever tasted in your life. Okay, cool. So there's a lot going on in there. It's really delicious. And then you can submerge the beef back into the liquid. That's so good. And even a little bit of the beef fat. So I cook the beef at 300 degrees, 325 for a couple hours or until that beef slides right off the bone and it's super tender. Cooking some beef and the house is gonna smell good, but I got a couple hours to probably clean up. So while the beef ribs gently blip away and become really nice and soft and tender, let's make the celery act cauliflower puree. And this, my friend, is celery act. It looks like a vegetable out of a Harry Potter movie, but it is really cool. So you got the tip and the root base. This is what I like to do. So cut the top off. It's really big and woody, and then cut the bottom off. So you have two choices. You can peel it with a peeler, or you can use a knife. I like using a knife, almost like a pineapple. Think of it, just take the knife and cut around it. So you just want to remove the skin and this is such a beautiful vegetable. I know it looks crazy, but if you cook it or eat it raw, it's delicious. Raw, it's really crunchy and kind of nutty, but when you cook it down, it's perfect for a puree and it gives such a cool flavor. The smell of it is like nothing you've ever had before. It's super rooty, it's got little notes of celery, but it's funky. And then mixed with the light flavor of cauliflower, this makes a great pool and a base for braised ribs. All right, so the celery is going to take the longest to cook, but I'm going to cook them together. So you want not too big of pieces, but that is a perfect piece for the celery act. When it cooks down with butter and salt and cream and you puree it, it's silky smooth. It's so, so good. Okay, so for the cauliflower part, it's pretty simple. I like to cut it in half. But here's the thing with cauliflower, you have a lot of root in there and it's really nice because the florets of the cauliflower get really soft. But if you leave a lot of the root on, it really gives the puree structure and gives you a mashed potato quality. So just only take a tiny bit of that stem off, make sure the green leaves are off, chop it up, get it into the bowl. Cauliflower, celery act puree, change your life. This puree is great with the beef ribs because you can cook it a day ahead of time. Even the beef ribs, if you let them cook, leave them for a day, eat them the next day, pow, you get way more flavor. Same with the puree. It's good to cook puree. You can serve it hot if you want. And it's really simple to get a lot of flavor out of it. So a good couple knots of butter, a little bit of heavy cream. You don't want too much because there's a little bit of water in the cauliflower. So just a nice drizzling of cream. And I keep the seasonings dead simple. Salt is going to highlight all of the beautiful flavor of the celery act. And I like to put pepper in it while it cooks because I love the change of flavor. 
put a lid on it and let it slowly cook. And you know when it's ready to puree? When it's nice and tender. This is gonna make my wife really happy. All right, beef is on, cauliflower and celery act puree is on, and I have a little time to kill, excuse me. Okay, so the whole house smells like a French bistro and those beef ribs took a couple of hours and you know how they're cooked because the meat tucks up on the bone. So for the cauliflower puree with the celery act, this is pretty cool. It's pretty simple. Just cook it till it's nice and soft. But here's a great tip. There's gonna be a lot of liquid in the bottom of this pan. And here's my tip. You wanna start with the veg and then start blending it and then add the liquid as you need it. If you put all the liquid in, you can make the puree kind of loose and I want it like a mashed potato, like a vegetable mashed potato. And look at that celery act and cauliflower. It's really nice and cooked. It smells so good. Punk. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, this is great. You want it nice and thick like this, but just a little bit of liquid, and then you can keep moving it around. It looks so good and taste. Yeah, with beef. Yeah, that's the one. That is totally the one. Come on, buddy, hit it. Okay, perfect, let's check the beef out. It smells delicious. All right, here we go. Oh, yes! Check that out. It's really nice and thick. The beans have cooked. The vegetables are still in pieces, but they've soaked up all that flavor. That is gonna be the best bean you've ever had. Okay, you spent a lot of time making these beef ribs. Let's make it look pretty. The first thing is, is a wall, like a barrier of the cauliflower celery puree to hold all of that sauce and all of that deliciousness. So put a big dollop on there. Then I like to take a spoon in the middle, and just open it up a little bit. It's like uh, when you were a kid and you made like the, the uh, what's it called? Um, like the, yes. The, 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 the gravy cave. <laughs> so you wanna have a nice area for the sauce to pool in the middle and that's what I'm gonna start with next is the sauce. Oh wait, I need this. This is so good because of the flour at the beginning and the beans, it cooks down so much, but it stays super thick. And I love cutting the carrots like that with the celery and onion because you can use that veg. Oh. Don't eat the bay leaf. Lots of people discard that veg, but I think it's so hearty and so delicious and there's so much flavor in there. Why would you waste it? And the beans from raw dried beans, they don't plump up as much as you would if you cooked them overnight, but they're really soft and super tender. All right, check out this beef rib. That is so good and you can tell that it's done because the meat is really nice and soft and you can see that the meat's tucked up from the bone and even if you touch it, it just pulls right off. That is delicious. You don't need anything else. That beautiful mash made from the celery act and the cauliflower with just a bit of butter, cream and salt and then the low, long and slow cook on the beef rib, lots of natural beef fat on those vegetables. Just drink all of that flavor up like a sponge. A little bit of white wine, tomatoes. It's a lighter beef cook for a beef rib, but it's just delicious and everything shines like a diamond. Perfect for a rainy day. So good. Now go to war like a soldier, yeah. Plus they tried to count me out, thinking that it's over. But I got to fight, Rocky Balboa. Yeah, I got to fight like Rocky Balboa. Yeah, I got to fight, Rocky Balboa. Yeah, I got to fight like Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa with the fight, yeah, huh? I got to fight, yeah, huh? All of my might. Left foot, right foot, left foot, right. Gotta walk for, got the dub in my sight. They thought I was losing, but I still keep coming. Life hit hard, but I never get the right.